Hey there. Welcome to another uh, Slightly Redneck video. I wanted to show you how I built my uh, my new brooder box. In a lot of ways, it's no different than any other brooder box. It's a, it's a clear Rubbermaid tub, screen top, and a you know heat lamp attached to it. But the difference with this one is, is I put a temperature sensor in it. So I've got this box that's sitting on top that's reading out the temperature right there. And when that gets to 97 degrees, I, I set it a little low for the purpose of this video so I could demonstrate uh, it working um, a little easier. But when it gets to 97 degrees, it's going to kick that light off and then it's going to allow the box to cool down to about 94 degrees, kick the light back on and heat it back up to 97. So basically I've got it set with a 5 degree uh, temperature swing um, and this will maintain my temperature in my brooder. So incredibly convenient. Um, I don't have to worry about moving my light back and forth to get the right temperature. I just set the temperature on the box and there you go. You can see when it hits 97 degrees it kicks the light off and it starts cooling the brooder back down a little bit. When it gets to 94 it kicks it on heats it back up. And you can set those temperatures to anything you want. So um, you know, not much other explanation to do on this. Let me get in and I'll show you how we build this thing. All right, like I said, this is a, a pretty cheap, easy build. So what I've got here is a, a tub. Um, I don't know what brand this is, maybe Sterilite or Rubbermaid. Um, but I went ahead and went with the clear tub. Uh, suggestion of a, of a YouTube viewer that I had that suggested a you know, clear tube. And I think that's great because you'll be able to see through here and you'll be able to see the, the quail in here. And also I won't need to add a, a light because it'll... You know, it'll light up and it's clear. The uh, heat lamp I've got, um, you can pick, purchase these at any uh, feed store, probably Walmart, probably, you know, Tractor Supply, any of those places like that. I went ahead and went with uh, the red bulb um, because uh, the way I'm going to rig this up, this thing's going to be going on and off, on and off all the time. And I, don't, I, I think that that red bulb probably disturbs them just a little bit less. So this is a 250 watt bulb. You could probably get away with slightly less, but... You know, I'm going to hook up a, a temperature control to this. So, um, anyway, I've got that, and then I've got some hardware cloth. So, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in this top. I'm going to attach this hardware cloth to it, and I've got a couple other things I'm going to do here. So, to cut a hole in this top, I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just going to use my razor knife, run down. There's a line already in the lid. I'm just going to follow that line around and cut it. Uh, pretty easy. If you're not good at cutting uh, straight lines with a razor knife, it can be tough. You might want to use, a, you know, a power tool like a coping, like a like a jigsaw maybe, or a, I don't like to use my Dremel on things like this because it wants to wander and it's really hard for me to keep straight. You may be better at that. Who knows? Use whatever it is that works for you to, to cut. You know, coping saws, um, you can just drill a hole, stick your saw down in there and saw your way around. Either Anyway, this stuff's pretty thin though and I think I can get through it with this razor knife. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. One thing I will say is the way I'm going to rig this up, it's going to have a temperature control on it. Um, I want this box to be able to stay fairly warm so I'm only going to cut half the lid. And I'm only going to screen half the lid. I'm going to leave the other lid solid. Uh, that'll help it trap the heat in there a little bit more so my light doesn't have to run all the time. If you're not going to put a temperature control on it, I would suggest cutting the entire lid off because you're going to need to mount the light and uh, you don't want it to heat up too much if, you're not, if you don't have temperature control on it. So let me get this cut real quick and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Basically, I'm just going to start. I'm not even going to measure it. I'm just going to guess it about halfway. I'm going to stick my knife down through there and cut all the way around. And you don't need to watch this whole thing. You get the idea of how this is going to work. Okay. All right, so got my top cut off here. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a piece of this hardware cloth, and I'm going to measure it out. I'm going to have to do some cutting on this with some dikes, but I'm going to measure it out to where it fits across the entire top. Um, because I may have to come back and cut the other side off later and I don't want to have to cut another piece of hardware cloth. But So basically I'm just going to lay it on here. I'm going to mark uh, so I don't have to cut one I need to. So I'm going to cut it right here at the edge of this lid. I want it to fit all the way out to the side pretty much. I'll give myself about oh, a half inch um, inside the, the lip of the the lid so I'll have something to attach it to without it interfering with the latching. And uh, Anyway, like I said, just going to measure it out and get it cut. So, uh, you know, let me do that real quick because, you know, that's not going to be fun to watch. I've just got a pair of dikes. I'm going to cut it off and kind of take care of these little loose ends on the ends of the wire when you cut them. They're, they're pretty sharp, so be careful with that. You might want to wear gloves. So let me get this cut out, and I'll come back, and I'll show you the next step. All right, I've got my hardware cloth cut out here. I, just, I laid it out on top here and set this tackle box on top just to hold it down and keep it from, from folding up. I had to cut out the corners, if you can see them. There, you should be able to see that. Cut out the corners here because they were stretching too far off the sides. And I may have to do a little bit of trimming more 
here to keep it away from the, uh, the underside ledge. I think I may. But what I'm going to do at this point is just uh, go drill a couple of holes here. Uh, make sure I'm not drilling through my um, through the, the ridge on the underside of this thing. Let me pick up this lid a little bit. You'll see what I mean. I don't want to drill through this part of the, the tub. I want to drill just through the lid. So, you know, feel around a little bit. You'll get an idea. I'm going to do, you know, two holes right here. Um, what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to explain this a little bit better. <laughs> what I'm going to do is drill some holes in here and I'm going to use zip ties to tie this thing together. Now you can use zip ties, just a, a piece of wire works, but I'm going to lay it on the underside, run these zip ties through and tie it in. But I want to go ahead and drill my holes, so I'm going to do that at, at the corners primarily, uh, maybe one or two down the middle. It doesn't have to be super sturdy, you're not going to be carrying a bunch of weight on this thing. It just needs to be on there so it doesn't fall off. So let me get some holes drilled here and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it. Got my holes all drilled out here, so now I'm going to flip this thing over. I'm going to do this on the bottom side. So I flip the lid over. Now, when you lay this wire on there, you want to make sure that it's bending this direction because that's going to keep it from sagging too much. If you lay it on this way, when we flip the lid over, it, you know it's going to sag a whole lot. Hopefully, you can see that on camera. So I'm going to lay it. Almost did it the wrong way. There we go. I'm going to lay it this way to where I have to hold these down. And then what I'm going to do is, it's a little bit tricky to get one started, but I'm just going to kind of lay this wire on there where I want it. I'm going to start in a corner because I know kind of where that, where that corner ends up. And then, if you can see this, I'm going to take a zip tie, fish it down through there, and back up through the other side. And once you get one or two corners done, it's going to be a lot easier. And then, I mean, you can probably kind of see that. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a zip tie you use here. It could be, uh, it could be just a piece of wire. Um, I just happen to have a whole bunch of zip ties, so that's what I'm using. And then I'll come back and clip off these extra strings when I'm done. So, I'm just going to work my way around the corners, make sure those get situated where I want them because everything else should fall in place from there. Alright, that should do it. Let's see if it fits on there. Good news, it does. Everything looks pretty sturdy, so that's pretty much it. Now we're ready to set up the uh, the heat lamp. I've got a nice little trick for this heat lamp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire. Uh, this is the excess wire I cut off the end here to make this a little bit shorter. I don't want this heat lamp you know, sitting right on this, this cage wire. I think it's going to make it real hot. So I'm going to take this cage wire here, or this uh, hardware cloth here. I'm going to wrap it in a loop. Uh, let me set something down so I can figure that figured out. Wrap it in a loop like that, tie it together, and this will make a nice stand for my heat lamp to sit on sits just like that so that'll that'll help now if you're not using a temperature control you're probably going to want it further away than that so I saw this idea on another forum it's a pretty good idea you know make yourself a little loop here put your heat lamp in there make sure you got a thermometer inside to tell what temperature it is and you can watch my video on how to brood quail um, if you need some help with that but basically you're going to start them off at 100 degrees or you know chickens or whatever you're brooding in here um, you know set your heat lamp on there and get an idea of how hot that's going to be and when you need to move it further away from the cage to, to cool the temperature off, just make yourself a bigger ring that'll stand up higher and you can move it further away. Um, you could rig up a stand. I mean, these have a, these heat lamps have a clamp on them, so you can clamp them to something to hang them up here, but you're not gonna want them down close like that. It's gonna get too hot on your birds. So you'll need something like this to, to hang it up. So I'm just gonna tie this together with some, uh, I might just use the ends here. You can see the ends are not chipped off. So I may just take that and bend that around here and, and tip it off, but I am going to cut them off of one side because I don't want those things sticking out and sharp and, and cutting me. So let me get that done. I'll figure out how I'm going to. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hook it together like this and bend those wires over to. Nah, if that makes sense, take it, hook it around like this, and bend those wires over to, to make kind of a hinge right there. And then I'll, I'll trim off the top here and I'll come back when I'm done with that. Well, that worked out pretty well. I got myself a nice little ring here that I can sit down on there. 
and then the lamp will be able to sit. It you know it fits in there pretty well. It'll just sit right down on top of it, just like so. I'll keep it off the bottom just a little bit. I may have to build that a little bit bigger, but you can see kind of how big I made this. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just kind of fits down inside there, and that'll hold that light up off the, the cage wire just a little bit. So there we go. That's pretty much all there is to, to setting this up. So let me get it all cleaned up. Let me get it all set up. I need to get start getting it warmed up anyway, and I'll show you the temper con temperature control uh, feature that I have set up for it. I need to test that out and make sure it's all working. And if you're watching this video, it is working. So um, let me get that done. All right, got it all set up now and uh, warming up for the for the eggs that are coming out. Not much to the setup process, and I'll pull you in closer and show you how this is working now. You can see right, uh, let's see right there. <laughs> That's my temperature control unit that I'm using. Um, you can see how to build that in another video. Uh, I'll put the link right here so you can see it. Uh, but other than setting up a brooder box the normal way, there's not much difference really. So let me pull you in close, and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I've got the brooder box open here just to show you how I ran the uh, the temperature sensor down inside. Just ran it over the side of the edge here. Put some duct tape over it right there. Ran it all the way down to the bottom. Um, just try to get this around the edge where the uh, where you know where the quail will be sitting. I'm sure they're going to pick at that a little bit, but you know they're not going to. I think it'll be fine, and they're not going to actually be able to pull it off there. So it should be it should work just great that way. And uh, if I have problems, I'm, I'm going to test this out before I post the video. So if I have any problems, you'll know about it. But uh, everything else seems to be working pretty well for that. Um, I've got my temperature sensor box sitting on top of the brooder right now, but I'm actually going to sit it on another shelf whenever I run it. Um, then it's just a matter of uh, setting your temperature that you want, plugging your heat lamp in, and setting it on top. And then you just lower the temperature as you need to go. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, let me turn this video around. I'll get it all closed out. Thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you learned something here. This was a neat little project. Um, you know, I don't know, uh, it turns the light on and off and on and off and on and off quite a bit. So, you know, it's really more of a fun project for me than it was a necess necessary project. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's going to work that much better, but, you know, if you're looking for something to do like this that's kind of cool and kind of fun and kind of high tech, makes people question a little bit, uh, then this is a great cheap project to do it on. The, uh, the box itself was cheap, uh, I think less than $10 for the box. Um, I already had the hardware cloth. Um, I had to, you know, the heat lamp, if you have to buy a heat lamp, uh, you're going to have to buy one anyway, so $10, $12 for that. The only real added expense to this was the uh, temperature sensor box, which cost me less than $20 to build. So really not much on this project, but it was fun. It was cool. It does give me a little bit of a reassurance, though. I know that I'm not going to be heating my birds up too much. Um, really more useful once they feather out than it is, you know, the first couple of days. But anyhow... A cool project, something fun to share, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and as always, God bless.